So in laying out your pasture for your pigs, there's some key, that's my foot you're standing on, is a very sensitive area. Please don't eat my boots. So a question I run into from time to time is how high should your electric fence be for your pastured pigs? And that's really a simple question to answer and the fact that it should be high enough not to let your pigs out. That's for all you guys that say I ramble on too much and don't get straight to the point. <laughs> all right, for those of you that want a little more discussion, stick with me. So there's a lot of discussion that goes along with electric pig fencing uh, for pastured pigs. Uh, the first, obviously, discussion point is, do you use single-strand or double-strand electric, or do you use you know, the, uh, the hog netting that you see, like the Premier One stuff? Well, I think it really matters based upon your setup. We can't use hog netting anywhere on our property unless down in one of our flat areas there, just simply because all the undulations, all the topography changes, doesn't allow for the fence to be taut and be used the way it's supposed to. So we go with single-strand and double-strand in some places. So the ideal height that we found for our pig fence is to be about between nose and eyebrow level, snout and eyebrow level. Now again, that's relative because a pig grazes and lowers his head, but you imagine a pig spends most of his time with his head down. He's rooting, doing that kind of stuff. Um, when he, even when he lifts his head, he's not lifting it really high normally, just looks out. <clears throat> so that's our primary parameter we set our height on. But of course, a pig's gonna be different sizes based upon its age. So this fence here is part of our boar pasture. In fact, you can see the little suckers over there eating. And so we have our fence single strand all the way around this entire paddock. The height varies at times right here, minus the snow is about six inches off the ground. The closer you get to the camera, it's maybe 12 inches off the ground. With all the undulations we have, then we have to do the best we can to get that height established. But knowing when I moved the boars over into here, they were already six months old. So they already were a certain stature that I knew I didn't, wouldn't have to be lower than that. If it was a piglet, of course, then I would need to be even lower. But I know I'm not going to have piglets over in this paddock. At least that's not the plan. It'll always be full-grown boars. And even if I get a new boar, he's going to be six months old at least before he comes over here. So in laying out your pasture for your pigs, there's some key, that's my foot you're standing on, there's some key characteristics you have to take into consideration about pigs. First and foremost is pigs don't have the greatest eyesight. And the whole purpose of electric fence is to be a psychological barrier. There's no way that's a physical barrier. The, sh the shock hurts, of course, but that's to affect them psychologically. It's not going to stop them from going through it. If they wanted to plow through that, these 300 pound guys could go through it in a heartbeat. So you need that psychological barrier. They need to be able to feel that and relate to that. Pigs have really good memories, so they're going to remember where that fence line is. Another key characteristic is a pig's face, especially its nose, is the most sensitive area. That snout, that little shovel that they have on their face, is a very sensitive area. Please don't eat my boots. So getting that shock to their nose is where you're going to get them trained the best. So setting your fence height to establish contact point with their nose. If you've got a pig, let's say your pasture's really nice and grassy and they're going to be rooting around constantly, or there's a lot of good forage, then that first line may need to be lower because their heads are always going to be down. If it's a barren wasteland like this time of year, then they're not necessarily going to be doing much rooting, so the fence could be higher. Also, a pig has very poor eyesight. They're not the greatest. They probably need glasses. If there's any pig ophthalmologists out there. Anyway. So the line has to be visual as well. If they establish contact with their nose, they need to associate it with the visual. That's why we like going with the 14 gauge. A, it's stronger than the 17 gauge, but it shows up better as well. So with my boars, I've discovered I have some leeway when it comes to fence height. You can tell right here where there's a little low spot that comes all the way up to my knee. So that's much higher than what most of the fence is elsewhere on the property. But I'm not too concerned about that simply because they have established a good relationship with this fence now. So as long as it's these three boars in this paddock, then I feel very confident that this fence is going to stay in. In fact, I discovered the other day that my fence charger had been unplugged for a couple days, and even with sows 200 yards away in heat that they can smell, they didn't go blasting through this. So they've established a really good relationship. They appreciate and respect it. If I had a new boar that was younger coming in here, then this would probably be an issue. I'd have to come drop this down some 
simply because he's going to squirt right under there. Let's see if I can get a willing participant here. So you see on this guy that when they walk around where they normally hang their head, if, if a pig's going to take an electric fence shock anywhere in the shoulders or the back, then he's going forward. He's, he's gone. So he's going to go through your fence. But if you can keep that lower than his shoulders, preferably on these pigs around the ears, so the highest the fence would hit would be right at his eyebrow, at the base of his ear, then that's going to stop him. That's going to get him to turn or back up, keep him from blasting forward, if he's been trained to electric fence. If you have pigs of varying heights in your pasture, of course, then set it for the lowest. So what I've discovered with these Tamworth large black mix is they're a little more athletic than my old Duroc Hampshire mix, which is what Merida is. These turkeys, they like to jump a little bit, so they require a little bit higher fence, even though I've had pigs this size in this pasture for a long time and, and usually not have issues with them. So when I turn around and look here at my separator line, you can see that height there. But that fence line is a couple inches higher than uh, what I would normally set, or what I have in, in the past. And it seems to be doing okay. I've noticed there's still one that jumps from time to time. Not a huge deal, because he comes back when it's time to feed. So what I'm going to need to do in this situation, especially for this divider fence, is probably put a second strand. And that second strand is definitely going to discourage the jumping. Now, Meredith here, who's been on the farm for quite a while now, she's become a staple of the place. She's the type of pig that's trained to the point where I could take all the fence down, and I don't believe she'd leave. <laughs> It'd take her a month or two to leave, because she, uh, she definitely remembers where the line is and doesn't want to tangle with electric fence. I can hold a piece of electric fence in my hand and walk toward her, and she'll back away thinking that I've got shocking power there. So here's a quick little tip that goes along with this fence discussion uh, for those of you that get snow. We don't get a lot of snow anymore, used to. But uh, this area here, the camera is at the same level of the barn that I was just in. And I'm down in this little watershed, valley, canyon, whatever you want to call it. This is where the piglets come to get water. But this is a dividing line right here between them and the sow's pasture. Well, when I first opened this area up, the piglets were coming down here to get water and they were able to go under this. In fact, they, they went under it so many times they, were, they busted the insulator. And so I had to come down and readjust and make sure I could lock them out. Put that fence lower, much tighter here, even put in, there's a log here that's an extra obstruction that just kind of slows them down a little bit, makes them stop and look. But with new snow that we got last night, I can come down and look and say, okay, is there, is there, are they going along testing the fence? Are they respecting it? And I can tell by just looking at the footprints, kind of their flow of traffic. They're coming down right there behind the camera, coming down for water, two different spots, and then they're going on over to this next bench here to forage and hang out. So they're actually going away now from the sow's paddock. So if I had a pig that was getting out, then a fresh snowfall would allow me to walk along that line and, and truly see where that, uh, that weakness is, whether they're going over it, whether they've gone under it, uh, something that may not be as obvious as a broken insulator or a section of fence that's actually down. So along the same lines of snow in that discussion, I've seen in, in more northern climates, we don't really deal with it much here because we don't get a lot of snow, as I mentioned, but when you run a lower strand as your snow piles up in the wintertime, then that negates that strand, either shorts it out completely, or of course lets a pig step over it. So I know a lot of guys that go to multi-strand and even have quick disconnects on their lower strands that they can simply go over to their barn or wherever their energizer is take a clip off and they've de-energized the lower strand because it's buried in snow. We have two strands here for two reasons. One is this is a high traffic area where the pigs like to come down, and you can't tell with the snow, but the green grass is all here and this is woods. The canopy kind of leans over this way. So they come down, they see that green grass, like, ooh, I'd like to be in that. Well, this is, this is areas where we run our, our, our poultry, so we don't want to have the pigs on this part of pasture. So the two strands helps discourage that, keeps them from wanting to jump over. And secondly, because this is an established line, I know I'm not going to change this line most likely. 
then I can go ahead and put that additional security of the second strand in and not have to worry about coming back and moving it anytime soon. When you look at incorporating multi-strand, it really just depends on your setup and what you're comfortable with. Uh, some people go three strand, four strand. It's, it's however much money you want to put in an infrastructure. And of course, you need to think of what are the consequences if the pig gets out. So if you just go a single strand, say, oh, I've saved a lot of money, I can keep that pig in there, I'm pretty certain, but the pig gets out, what damage can occur on this side? So if you've got a neighbor with a prize rose garden, that type of thing, you may want to increase your infrastructure there and make sure you've got a better chance of keeping those pigs in. For us, pig gets out, hundreds and hundreds of acres of nothing around here, so um, they would just get out and find a good food source and then come back. I'm not as frantic if a pig gets out as if I were beside somebody's garden or a really nice yard or those type of things. Well, I hope that helps some of you answer that question. If you're just getting started, I recommend trying something out. Don't put a ton of money in infrastructure yet. Try it and test it. You can make sure your pigs aren't on the side of a major highway and that could cause issues there if they would get out. But test it before you put a lot of money into putting in something permanent or deciding this is exactly the way I need to set up my fence. If you're a first timer, test it first. Well, I pray everyone have a great new year. I pray that 2021 is a prosperous and healthy year for everyone, and we can put some of the bad of 2020 behind us. All right, take care, everybody.